Welcome back to The Big Show. We're here at the Gilgood with one of the best shows I've seen in years. It's called Lend Me a Tenor and the big star, of course, is Matthew Kelly. How are you? The Big Show! Hooray! What we, else would you call it? Oh, this is... Well, it's a great show, Lend Me a Tenor. I, lo- I really, really love it. And, you know, I always believe in everything I do and I have to because otherwise you couldn't do it. But this is just one of the best. I saw this... Um, they first did uh, workshops for it about a year ago and I saw both the workshops so I was, I was in town doing uh, Waiting for Godot this is different slightly well it's, <laughs> it's the same performance for me obviously just a different frock but um, so I saw it then and I said oh, I really really want to play that and then uh, we went and did it in Plymouth and uh, then it took six, seven months to wait for a home for it in the West End, and now I'm just thrilled it's here. So really, it's taken a year to get it on on stage here, and it's kind of a bit of an, an unknown quantity for people. All I can tell you about it is, it's unique as far as musicals concerned because it's a farce, and it's a musical, and it's a musical based on a farce. But the farce element has been doubled up, if you like, and actually, the, the strangely. The music doesn't slow down the farce for some bizarre reason. And I think that's because every song moves the story along. And when you get to the actual farce part of it, it's clean and it's pure and it's fast and it's funny and the timing is brilliant. And I just have to tell you, this is the best company in the entire West End. (laughs) Well, I'm so pleased for you that it's working because it's got decent music in it as well. That's not always a given in a musical these days, is it? Well, um... I don't know. It's What's great about this is, of course, it's an original musical, and uh, that's kind of unusual. And also, it's not based on a film, which is also unusual. Because actually, we were counting the shows up in the West End that are all based on musicals. I mean, Ghost just opened last night. I don't think it's had its press night, although I have heard it's quite good. Uh, Shrek is a film. Um, Legally Blonde is a film. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, never mind the others. Let's talk about us. <laughs> <laughs> I love any show where you've got a lot of slamming of doors. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, I tell you, that whole sequence <laughs> where of mistaken identity, it's just, I think, one of the most brilliantly conceived pieces I've ever seen on a gorgeous set. I mean, that set is beautiful. Did you know that they, when they were building the set, they bought every book of gold leaf that there was available in the country? <laughs> yes. That- <laughs> yeah, you'd have thought they'd do that with our wages, wouldn't you? But no. Or uh, your rather glamorous dressing room. Oh, actually, it's nice, this. As dressing rooms go, it's not bad, is it? Because you know, here at the Gilgood Theatre uh, was completely refurbed by Cameron Mackintosh, and it cost eight million quid. And it looks like it originally looked, and it's taken eight million quid to do it because it completely gutted the place because it was rotting from the inside out. And uh, it's beautiful, and it, and it really looks like it's never been done up. I mean, it looks like it's in its original state. I think it's a stunning place. And this is a theatre that 25 years ago, uh, the original farce, Lend Me a Tenor, by Ken Ludwig, was played. And Ian Talbot, who directed this, and who also ran the park, you know, Regent's Park, for 20 years, he played Max, my assistant, <laughs> in this play, on this stage at the Gilgal Theatre 25 years ago, can you imagine? What goes around comes around. Hey, we're doing well as well. No rats or mice in the last 10 minutes I've seen. This is a good theatre. It's a, Well, we they don't like to come out at this time, obviously. <laughs> no, it's not until the bar opens they come out. <laughs> no, they'll be there, love. They'll be there. Hey, listen, I want to talk about you because I grew up watching you on TV. You were one of the biggest stars during my whole time of watching TV on Saturday night. And seeing the reaction from the audience, there's a mutual love, isn't there? You love them and they love you. <laughs> you say that to all the boys. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I've, uh, it's funny. I, I, um, I, I like... I like my work. I love my work, you know. I've been playing in the dressing up box for a long time. It's not like it's a proper job, and they know that, and they know that, I know that. I've wanted to be an actor ever since I was six, and I wanted to do every type of theatre and every aspect of it. I've been a stage manager. I've worked in uh, theatre and education. I've uh, worked in uh, on, with in Samuel Beckett, Shakespeare. Uh, I've done presenting, as you know, um, and I've been really lucky and I've been around for a long time. And I think what happens is what you're talking about is that um, people get comfortable with you. I think they allow you to do 
uh, to move on. And uh, yes, but you've got to keep on delivering, I suppose. And I suppose it's like being a moving target, really. And I've never done a big West End musical before. Although, actually, I thought, you know, I've never done a musical. Well, do you know I've done 12? When you tot them all up, <laughs> and you think, yeah, in the provinces, you know, I've done loads and loads and done tours of things. And um, I've toured with the National Theatre in... Um, in uh, Pied Piper, the musical, and um, I've done, uh, well, oh, here's one. Well, I was up in Bolton, right, at the Octagon Theatre doing their 40th anniversary production, which was nice because it was in their 20th as well. We did Oh, What a Lovely War with my son, Matt, right? And uh, of course, Oh, What a Lovely War is a musical, and I never, never really thought about it. And of course, everybody appears as Pierrot's. And um, everybody knew that I was in the show, but they didn't know that my son was in the show. And he was first on, sh on the stage. And he come flying on. And you could see people in the audience go, flipping heck, is that Matthew Kelly? He's had a lot of work done, hasn't he? <laughs> and, then, and then I come flying on like a warning, you know, like the before and after shot. <laughs> you know, they go, oh my God, he's, he's done some living, hasn't he? It must be strange actually working together because, I mean, I know how proud you are of him and you talk about musicals. I know he did The Producers and you were just in Spamalot. That's the last time I saw you. The, the, the key to both of those roles and this is your timing, comic timing and sense of humour. I mean, there was that in Godot as well. Your timing is impeccable. Has he caught on to that? Well, I tell you what, with Matt, um, it, well, we're very alike and you know that we played Ugly Sisters together in pantomime and uh, the reason that we did that was because it's all shades of wrong. You shouldn't really be cross-dressing with your... No, cross-dressing with your children over the festive period. It's not right, that, is it? It's something for social services. And you know how we got to do that? Well, we were doing Samuel Beckett up in Liverpool at the Everyman and we were doing Endgame, which is one of my favourite plays. And he was playing... Clov and I was playing Ham, right? And Ham never stands up in the play. It's one of my favourite plays. I love sitting down. <laughs> anything to not stand up and not do anything is just brilliant. And he couldn't sit down. But they have this banter all the way through it, which for us was kind of easy because um, it's born out of DNA. So you have a lot of shorthand that that's e makes working together easier. Anyway, to promote that, we went to the Ball O'Grady show. We'd never been on telly together before. And our management saw us and, and rang us up and said, here, we just watched you. Do you want to come and play Ugly Sisters? <laughs> well, of course... We couldn't resist it because we like we are like twins in a way. I'm slightly older than him, but not that much. <laughs> Mentally, I think he's probably older than me. He's certainly a nicer person than I am. Do you have to be careful there's not that? Um, could you do it like that or change that because I know more than you because I've been doing it longer? Oh, no, that boy taught me everything I know, really. No, I couldn't. I, it, no, because we have such a laugh when we work together. And uh, even when we're not, you know, when we're living in town, he has a flat above me, which is absolutely treacherous, you can imagine. <laughs> He's just finished touring um, To Kill a Mockingbird. And uh, he was playing Boo Radley. And I went, ooh, Boo Radley, that's a marvellous part in To Kill a Mockingbird. Great, with uh, Duncan Preston, fantastic. Five months tour. And uh, he'd just come out of Panto with Paul O'Grady. I don't know why they always put those two together, because it's <laughs> lethal, really. <laughs> Anyway, I read it, and it's only got 15 lines. And the reason you think Boo Radley is a good part is because he's talked about all the way through it. And, of course, in the end, he is the hero of the piece because he saves the children at the end. And I said, oh, Matt, are you going to do this? 15 lines. He said, well, it's a no-brainer. There's no work about him having that. Five months with 21 people on the road. He's at the time of his life. Yeah. Is it hard to come out, be shot out of a kennel from the second go, which you have to do in this? I mean, from the first time you slam that door, which is the opening bit, um, you've got to be 100%. How do you do that when you're not feeling so good or you've done 18 shows this week or you've recorded the CD like you have just on Monday and Tuesday? Well, it's been it's been quite a couple of months, really. And I was actually, I was just saying to Damien, who plays Max, I said, was it this week we were recording the album? And he said, yes. Well, it feels like it was about a month ago because every day is three weeks long. And uh, when you don't feel like it, I don't ever feel like it. When I wake up in the morning, the last thing I want to do is a show at night. I would rather put my eyes out with Byros, to be honest with you. I always think, oh, please, please don't make me do this. Please don't make me do this. And uh, it's a very odd way of living, actually. And, and the director said to me, it's, it's no way to run your life. And he's quite right. But I get to the theatre and I love, I love the company of actors. I love the feeling of being on stage. Um, and right up until the moment where you actually set foot on stage, I'd rather not do it at all. 
because it just looks like a fantastic mountain you have to climb before you can go home you know and uh, then when you've actually set foot on stage and it's like that first moment on the roller coaster where you think I shouldn't have done this shouldn't have done this and then the ride and it is the ride of your life and that's exactly what it's like being on stage and something else as well being on stage is the safest place in the world now that's a really odd thing to say because um you're kind of vulnerable and open to you know being having cabbages thrown at you i suppose <laughs> but in a way it's it's the safest place because you're always in the moment so you never have to think about tax about plumbers about accountants <laughs> about relationships about your health about anything you are absolutely in the moment playing in the dressing up box which is the most perfect place to be so as a lifestyle choice i couldn't have found anything better but frankly you know at the beginning of the day when i wake up in the morning it, the thought of it is just appalling I want to talk to you about something now. You're probably going to stand up and walk out or get very offended. And I don't want you to, because this is what journalists do. Don't they wait till the end. Um, <laughs> can I talk about your legs? <laughs> do we really need to see them in this production? It's not the legs that are the problem. It's the <laughs> tights. You know it is. Honestly, somebody came in here and said, that cod piece should really have a... <laughs> Should really have a dressing room of its own, actually. <laughs> it's frightening, isn't it? It's not right. You know, my legs, I mean, they are tragic, really, aren't they? And I've got to that stage now where my knees are going. I know, and uh, I mean, they were never the prettiest. I just think we should have a warning before the show. This wasn't something I was expecting you in the well, nice well, suit well, or the dinner suit, maybe, but not the legs. Listen, I've got, I've got a freedom pass. <laughs> I don't care anymore. But... <laughs> I'll get them out for anybody if there's a fee involved. <laughs> and you do eight times a week here at the Gilgood. This show is tremendous. Thank God for you. I've walked out so many shows this week. Um, partly because of the performance. It was as if I was either A, lucky to see them, or B, they couldn't be bothered to put on a show. And I always think that if I could do it, it's not good enough. And with this, with all the parts, the lead parts are just incredible. There's some real talent in this, isn't there? This is stage door. Oh, Brad that's Carroll. stage door. Brad, Brad Carroll, Carroll. The, the, the composer. Oh, they were so delightful, you know, Brad Cal, Peter Sham, who, who wrote the book, just marvellous people. Um, the, the, I think there's a spirit in a show that has to come over the footlights, and it starts with everybody in the company uh, enjoying what they're doing and being very specific about what they do, because I think great enjoyment comes out of a discipline uh, and it doesn't matter how many people are in. And it's a funny thing. Somebody once said to me, why do we always blame the people who turn up when there's a small house? Isn't it funny? You know, you think, oh, there's a small house. Haven't they got any friends, these people? Good Lord. <laughs> you know, and quite often I find when there's a small house in, you quite often get a better show, funny enough, because you get very specific and you get... Um, I mean, I'm not against crass and generalised as a, you know, as a lifestyle choice, but... <laughs> I think, you know, to, to get our enjoyment out of the show, we have to be as specific and disciplined and accurate as we possibly can be. And we've also had some great help on this as well because we've had Paul Gemignani, who's known as the king of Broadway. Honestly, God, what a terrifying man when he arrived. Because I don't sing, you see. And uh, I thought, oh, my God, because he's got a terrible reputation. He's a very big man, and he's got great big thick bottle-bottom bottle glasses that are tinted, <laughs> and he's huge, and he doesn't, and he's got no top lip either. I don't tell him I said that. But, and I went up to him, and I said, oh, Paul, I said, I'm, I, to be honest with you, I said, I'm frightened of you. He said, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, he said. And he, and he gave me some pointers. And, uh, and he, was ve he was kind with me, because I respond to being nurtured and cherished. If people shout at me, I don't like it at all, I will go away and I will cry. I, actually, I might cry in front of you. you know, I've, no, I'm a coward and I don't care, who knows it. And uh, he was very kind and very helpful, and he kind of brought me up to speed with it. Because, I mean, the singers in this show, right, Sophie Louise Dan, who I eventually marry at the end, and frankly, who wouldn't? Um, sh the number that she sings in this show is unbelievable. It's a blinding showstopper. It has every operatic aria you have e ever heard in your life. It takes five minutes to do, and people go wild at the end. 32 seconds is the... With <laughs> the stagehands, the stagehands watch this. I haven't told her that. I hope she doesn't <laughs> hear this. It'll, it'll frighten her off. The, there's another showstopper in the the first half, I'm sure you would have noticed, which is a duet between Michael Matus and Damien Humbley, uh, 
called Be Yourself. And it's so moving. I mean, it's, it's a showstopper for a different reason. And I listen to it every night, you know. Every single performance I listen to it. And it makes me well up every time I, I hear it. I mean, I am a big soft Nelly, of course, but, you know, but it is a wonderful song and it's very... Uh, and, and there's also wonderful nods to uh, to Verdi and to opera. It's the kind of show, I think, if you like opera, you'll love this. And if you hate opera, you'll love this. It's kind of there's something for the whole family. I know now you've made it in show business because I saw you on Loose Women the other day. Oh, I love Loose Women. I love it. The trick is with Loose Women, don't let them talk. I'm there to flog me stuff. I'm, I go on there like I'm on the shopping channel. I just don't care. It's terrible, isn't it? Because one minute you're talking about your play, the next minute you're talking about periods. It's not necessary. Well, I think we should just synchronise our periods and then we'll all be a lot happier. Does your heart sink when they say to us, "We've none of us have seen it, tell us about the show? Because actually this is a show that's got to be seen to kind of promote, hasn't it? i tell you what makes your heart sink. The last show I did at the Duchess Theatre uh, was Tim First's latest play and it was called Sign of the Times. And I thought it was a wonderful piece of writing. And... Uh, after two weeks, I did my first day of publicity, and it was the day after the notice went up. So I had to go on Alan Titch Park just after I'd been sacked to say, "Oh, come and see my marvelous show." And I couldn't say it's coming off in two weeks, so you better hurry up. Life is brutal, isn't it? Hey, listen, you must hate me. This is a two-show day, and I'm wasting your time now. What happens? Are you going to have a lie down on the bed you sat on? Do you go and get coffee? Do we go and have a sandwich? What happens? Well. What do you mean? No, I, I love this. You were talking about my favourite topic, me. <laughs> Are you insane? What is wrong with you? No, what would I do now? Well, I'm going to clear out this room because Damien has a bad back and he's got to have a lie down. So I promised him the bed, but he says it's the floor. But we kind of rotate, you know, either Michael or me or Damien will have the floor, one will have the bed and one will have one of these armchairs. Um, I've got a bit of chicken in the fridge, but I'm going to go out and buy some wine for later on because not that I'm a drinker, Oh, no, because I'm a drinker. I always get those mixed up. Yeah, yes, I am a drinker, yeah. For the love of God, can you make this sound more showbiz? I mean, we're here in the West End, and you're making it sound like you're in some hovel. <laughs> Listen, it's a weird thing. It's funny you should say that about hovels. I feel right at home in hovels. I feel a little bit uncomfortable when I'm in a dressing room that's really been done up. And when they've been done up, they look a bit like, you know, a National Hilton. Yeah, Premier Lodge, isn't it? Let's be honest. It pretty much is. But these are nice dressing rooms, these. But I like sharing dressing rooms don't like being on my own because it's part of the camaraderie and part of the bonding and the trust that you have to have on stage you know because um i think that's what makes a show because if you've got a company that's gelled together and they're all working towards one thing then it will be a glorious show as this show has been described as glorious and it is Matthew Kelly thank you so much keep on keeping on because you're tremendous your energy is just inspired and this show is fantastic the, the talent in it is brilliant and thank God for something new different and well written and a great score it's got everything and you come out smiling and what more can you need from that well thank God for you you could come again mate <laughs> <laughs>